Good morning, family. It's interesting that when we grow up as children, we end up looking to those closest to us. And when we look to those closest to us, we generally will be defined or we will see a definition of what love is. They will define that for us. It may be something that's warped. It may be something that's very biblical and powerful. It may be something that's abusive, but we end up gathering that. And children, children really do do this a lot. They look at things and they're asked many times, what is love? What does love look like? Well, let me start by giving you some answers. Nell, who's age seven, when asked what is love, said that love is when you tell a guy that, he like, that you like his shirt and then he wears that shirt every day. <laughs> Danny, who also is age seven, is asked, and he says, love is when mommy makes coffee for daddy and then she takes a sip before giving it to him to make sure that it tastes okay. <laughs> Nika, who also is age seven, if you want to learn to love better, you ought to start with a friend who hates you. Billy, who's actually age four, when someone loves you, the way they say your name is different. You just know that your name is safe in their mouth. Mary Ann, who's also four, she says love is when your puppy licks your face even after you've left him alone all day long. Lauren, who's four as well, I know my older sister loves me because she gives me all of her old clothes and she has to go out and buy new ones. <laughs> and then this one, this last one took a little bit different direction. Little Kenny, who's seven, says, it gives me a headache to think about that stuff. I'm just a kid. I don't need this kind of trouble <laughs> when he's asked. It was read well, but let's read it again. John 13, and I want to read in verse 34. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By, all, by this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Do you know that the early Christians learned love by watching Jesus' love? The love of Jesus, the way he treated people, it caught on like a raging fire through a dense forest. The apostle John witnessed this love and he became known as the disciple of love by the way he acted and by the way he wrote letters. So Jesus and John taught the early disciples. Here's what they taught them. That your badge, your badge of discipleship should be love. No, I'm telling you today, that should be, like, you know, a badge is something that lets people know your identity. It lets people know who you are. It gives you access to places that maybe other people don't have. And love becomes and became the identity of the early Christians. Is it ours? Individually and collectively, is that our identity? You see, it wasn't, their identity wasn't their religious talk. Their identity, when you looked up their website, they didn't have one, but if you looked up their website, their identity wasn't a picture of the church building or their beautiful church sign. It wasn't their method of dress. It wasn't their rituals. It wasn't how they prayed. It wasn't even strictly their doctrine. It was how their badge of identity was love. Love gave them access to the hearts and homes 
of humanity. That's why they grew the way they did. They preached the word, and they loved like Jesus loved. Imagine that. Imagine a church who keeps the balance of teaching the truth and loving like Jesus loves. You know what will happen? Same thing that's happening to you. It's growth. Like true, genuine connection. And so Jesus... Jesus taught in John 13 a new commandment. Okay, love wasn't really new to them. As a matter of fact, the law mandated two central commandments. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. Then why would you call this, as he's talking to his disciples, a new commandment I give to you? Actually, in your Bible, John 13, verse 34, gives the straightforward answer. Here's what he says. This is my, or a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you. I've given you what that love looks like. If you turn a couple of pages forward in John 15, look at 12 and 13. John chapter 15, verse 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you, Watch this. He adds adds another sentence to it. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one laid down his life for his friends. And then when you skip to verse 17, this command, I command you, love one another. The apostle John is the writer, the one whom Jesus loves. He witnessed this type of love. As a matter of fact, John, in the gospel, according to John, writes about love 57 times in his book. 57. Early church writer, Jerome. These men getting to witness the early church. Here's what he said. He said, you know that John... John just kept repeating to everybody, little children, love one another. Where did John get that? Because Peter and John, Acts chapter 4, have been with Jesus. Another early church writer, Tertullian, once testified, this came a century after John's gospel account, that the pagans of his day were amazed that the love of Christian fellowship, even in the face of persecution and death, and the statement that he made, that he would hear from everybody else, see how they love one another, how ready they are to die for each other. This is my new command that I give you. Love each other, and there's nothing greater than to lay down your life for one another. And they got to witness this love. The early Christians got it from Jesus. And so it wasn't just have love for each other. It's have love the way he loved even as I have loved you. This must be where we get our definition and determination of love because a lot of people have a really warped view and warped angle of what love is. They got it from society or they got it from their parents who didn't know how to do it in front of a spouse or a friend group. And it's so dangerous to learn to love from other people except for Jesus. And yet, if others have learned The love of Jesus, you get to learn from them. That's the beauty in it. So what does that love look like? Five qualities of Jesus' love that the early Christians got to witness, got to see for themselves in Jesus, and that is that he was unselfish in his love for them. He lived an unselfish life. John chapter 13 and verse 1. Now the feast of the Passover 
Before the feast of the Passover, Jesus, knowing that his hour had come, would depart out of this world to the Father, having, watch this, brethren, having loved his own who were in the world, and he loved them to the end. That's hard to do. Love them all the way through it. You mean even when they doubt? Even when they doubt. Even when they fail? Even when they fail. Just love them unselfishly. Why? Mark 10, 45. He didn't come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for the many. He set the precedent of what love looks like. It's unselfish. John 13 and verse 13, you call me teacher, you call me Lord. You're right, for I am so. If I then am teacher, if I am Lord, I have washed your feet. You ought to also wash other people's feet. I gave you this as an example that you should go and do as I did. It's just unselfish. Love is unselfish. Little children love each other. How? Unselfishly. And number two? In a giving way. John chapter 10 and verse 17. For this reason, the Father loves me because I laid down my life so that I may take it again. Acts chapter 10, he speaks of this Jesus of Nazareth who God appointed and he went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil because God was with him. He went about giving his life and giving his service and giving his time and giving his energy this is what love looks like brethren let's do what he did let's do what they did they learned from the best and that love was unselfish it was giving and it was forbearing it was a forbearing love first corinthians 13 and verse 4 love is patient ephesians 4 and verse 2 says showing tolerance for one another in love. Brethren, that means we're waiting on each other. We're giving each other room to grow. We're giving each other space to mess up and to repent because we're forbearing. We bear with each other out of love. Other people don't do that very good. We should be the people. That should be, it's our badge of discipleship, that we love in an unselfish way, in a giving way, in a forbearing way, in a forgiving way, number four. Ephesians 4, 32, listen, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ has forgiven you. Love is forgiving. It's giving the benefit of the doubt. It's quick to forgive. It's quick to see the best in others who mess up even and help them move on and we move on brethren when people look at us when they look at the church they ought to see love and love is unselfish and it's giving and forbearing and forgiving and it's universal it's for everybody and jesus demonstrated this it's for the rich people you should say amen to that you're actually in that category and not a one of us said amen. Aren't you glad that you are the wealthy and he loves you? Amen. And it's also for the poor. It's for the homeless. It's for the Jew. It's for the barbarian. Amen. It's for the Samaritan. It's for the young, and it's for the old, and it's for the tax collector, and it's for the woman, and it's for the leper, and it's for the outcast, and it's for the hurt, and the Pharisee, and the unbeliever, and the Democrat, and the Republican, and the Independent, and the lost, it's for you. It's a universal love. 1 John 4, 9, by this, the love of God was manifested in us. It was manifested as it showed itself through us that God sent his one unique son into the world. For God so loved the world. That's me. You can put your name there. It doesn't matter where you come from. 
His love is universal. It's for all of mankind. You don't have to be a certain color. You don't have to be from a certain nation. You don't have to be a certain tongue or a certain scale of salary. You don't have to be any of that. You get to be loved by God and be a part of his loving body because love is our badge. It's our identity of discipleship because people are more important than things. People are more important than money and buildings and clothing and church programs because it's our identity. That's my lesson. Like I'm done. That's it. But I want to challenge you with four things. Because I think I, think I know you believe and are convicted about the things that I just said to you. Right? Then Steve, prove it. If love is my badge of discipleship, all men will know that you are my disciples by how you love one another. Then I want to give you four things here, what I'm calling the Romans law of love from the book of Romans. Here's number one. Then I prove it with loving with pure motives. Romans chapter 12 and verse 9, the Bible says, let love be without play acting. Hypocrisy. No hypocrisy. Don't you dare love this person and hate this one. Don't you dare say you love somebody and then go talk ill about them behind their back. That's hypocrisy. Don't, don't, don't claim this stuff if you're not going to do this stuff. I mean, that's what he's saying. Let your love be one-faced, not two-faced. And devote yourself to it. Like, be all in with it. Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. Be devoted to love each other in brotherly love. Be sold out to it. Number three, don't wrong your neighbor. Romans 13 and verse 10, love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love fulfills the law. Love fulfills the law. It covers everything. Do your neighbor, the neighbor in your pew, the neighbor across the fence, across the road, across countries, do them no wrong. Now everybody take a deep breath. Some of you didn't do that very well. Let's do it again. Because number four, do not hurt other people with your opinions. Because the Bible is very clear. In Romans chapter 14, if your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not, by your eating, destroy someone in whom Christ died for. Here's a better way. Maybe if your brother or sister is distressed because of your preferences. Stop hurting people with things 
that are subjective. In other words, I mean, sure you can have your say, but you're not going to have your way. With a lot of things. I know your, your opinion is probably the greatest. Mine is. But we're not all going to get our way with it. So why do we hurt people? Why do we hurt each other? With a bunch of stuff that doesn't matter. You're hurting each other's... You read the whole context. You're hurting each other with what you're eating? Come on, Pete. Come on, Christians. Christ died for those people. And you're upset about what they won't eat or about what they are eating? Stop. That's not love. And so we have a big task before us, brethren. And that is to make our badge. I'm talking about the Wiley Church of Christ. Those of you who are quote unquote members, you've come to be a part of us under the, underneath the eldership here to work and to worship. You got a big task. And that big task is that in every single thing we do and say, we do it out of love. There's a document, an old, old document. I want to stand before you and read part of it. It's a document called The Apology of Aristides, written in the 2nd century. But the Christians, O king, while they went about and made search, have found the truth. And as we learn from their writings, they have come nearer to truth and genuine knowledge than the rest of the nations. For they know and they trust in God, creator of the heavens and the earth, in whom and from whom are all things, to whom there is no other God, little g, as companion, from whom they receive commandments in which are engraven upon their minds and observe in hope and expectation of the world which is to come. Wherefore, they do not commit adultery nor fornication. They don't bear false witness. These people don't embezzle what is held in pledge nor covet what's not theirs. They honor their father. They honor their mothers. They show kindness to those who are near to them. And whenever they are judges... They judge uprightly. They do not worship idols made in the image of man. And whatsoever they would not that they should do unto them, they do not do unto others. And of the food which is consecrated to idols, they don't eat. You know why? Because they're pure, he says. And their oppressors are appeased, comforted, and they make them their friends. They do good to their enemies. And their women, O king, are pure as virgins, and their daughters are modest, and their men keep themselves from un, un, every unlawful union and from all uncleanness in the hope of a recompense to, the, to come in the other world. And when they see a stranger, they take him into their homes, and they rejoice over him as a brother. For they do not call them brethren after the flesh, but brethren after the spirit and in God. And whenever one of their poor passes from the world, each one of them, according to his own ability, gives heed to him and carefully sees to his burial. And if they hear that one of their number is imprisoned or afflicted on the account of the name of their Messiah, all of them anxiously minister to his necessity. And if it's possible to redeem him, they set him free. And if there's any among them that's poor and needy, and if they have no spare food, they fast two or three days in order to supply to the needy their lack of food. 
They observed the precepts of their Messiah with much care, living justly and soberly as the Lord their God commanded them. And every morning and every hour, they give thanks and they praise their God who is loving, has loving kindness toward them. And for their food and their drink, they offer thanksgiving to him. It is enough for us to have shortly informed your majesty concerning the conduct and the truth of these Christians. For, it, for great indeed and wonderful is their doctrine to him who will search into it and reflect upon it. And verily, this is a new people. And there is something divine in the midst of them. Those were the other Christians. Why was there something divine in the midst of them? Because you will know them by their love. Little children, love one another as God through Christ has loved you.